Welcome to this session on Hotspur and Hotspur's character. We can think of Hotspur as the Hugh Grant of Henry IV Part 1, and we think of that because Hugh Grant never really changes his character in any of the movies that he's in, and similarly Hotspur doesn't really change his character throughout the text. So the first thing we need to understand is what's the deal with Hotspur? Who is he and um, what's he like? Well, he is part of the Percy family, and the Percy family were those who helped bring King Henry IV into power. And at the beginning of the play, we find that the Percys are not that happy with the way the king has, I guess, acknowledged or not acknowledged uh, their role in helping him become powerful. Not only this, but the king is refusing to pay the ransom to set Hotspur's brother-in-law free. And this sort of gets Hotspur's goat, is not really impressed with this, and so he gets quite angry at the king. And this sort of starts, or is the spark, for the rebellion. Um, Hotspur's uncle, Worcestershire Sauce, and his father, Northumberland, have this plan to overthrow uh, the king. And because Hotspur is so fired up about a, the fact that uh, the king is not acknowledging his family's role in bringing the king to power, and also the way he's handled uh, Mortimer and Mortimer's cap um, being captured. Uh, Hotspur's the perfect candidate to sort of lead this rebellion through his uncle and, and, and um, or by his uncle and, and by his father. And so that's sort of the situation that's going on with Hotspur. What's he like as a, as a character? Well, firstly, he's, he's a bit of a hothead. Uh, that's where he gets his nickname from, Hotspur. He's short-tempered, he's fiery, he's rash, he's impetuous. Uh, he doesn't think things through very clearly. He sort of acts on instinct. Um, he's not sort of he's not the smartest in his family. So um, his uncle is quite cum cunning and, and scheming. Um, his father is sort of um, very wise, and and he's got a lot of self-preservation. We see come out towards the end of the text. But Hotspur himself is quite an open book. He's easy to read. He's, he's quite predictable in his actions. Um, you know, and that's when we talk about him not changing. It's, it's pretty clear what he's like and the sorts of things that he's, he's going to do. And so his uncle and his father are able to sort of manipulate him because of this into doing their bidding in some ways. Hotspur is obviously quite happy to do it because he's so fiery um, and because he's fired up by what the king's done. But his uncle and his father do sort of manipulate him and, and, and put him in a position where he does their bidding in a sense. So his fiery nature um, brings about both his, his glory and his, his great victories in the battlefield, but also we see that sort of contribute to his downfall as well throughout the text. So he's a hothead, and we can see some quotes here um, that show this, and you can go and look these up yourself in your own time. There's, of course, other ones, but these are some that, that show his impetuous nature. Next, we can think of Hotspur certainly as a brave and gallant soldier, and this is acknowledged by pretty much everybody in the text, from the king right in the opening um, to, to Glendower and Douglas, um, and even Hal himself acknowledges that Hotspur is certainly a fantastic soldier, great in the battlefield, very brave, um, uh, you know, a great fighter. Um, and we see that right from the start when, you know, they're talking about his, his victories on Holmwood, and we, we understand that he beat Douglas three times. Um, Falstaff remarks to Hal when he finds out that sort of hot spurs against him that, you know, there's not there's not really any better enemy than, than him um, and asks whether he's, he's, whether Hal is afraid of, of Hotspur. So he's certainly a, a brave and gallant soldier and his victories in battle have won him a great deal of honour, a great deal of respect and a great deal of admiration. So we can see, um, you know, in terms of some quotes here that show that, the prince acknowledges that there may not be a braver gentleman or more valiant gentleman than Hotspur. Um, and even some of the, the quotes that come from Hotspur himself show that he's certainly no coward. He's certainly very brave and he certainly welcomes the battlefield. What else is he like? Well, certainly he's obsessed with honour and, and obsessed with glory. This is really his, his one focus in life, is to gain honour. The king introduces him right at the start as the theme of honour's tongue. Um, people see him as someone who has a lot of honour um, and who is glorified, and he certainly gained honour in the lives of, of many people through his heroics in battle. But this is probably his chief pursuit in life. This is the thing that Hotspur is most greatly concerned with, is is finding honour, is gaining honour, is being seen as someone who is honourable. And for him, 
honour is about um, being victorious in battle, being the strongest, being being the bravest, um, beating the most people, defeating the most enemies in battle. This for him is what honour is like. And above all else, he is obsessed with honour. This is the one thing that he craves in life, um, even to the point of when he dies, when Hal kills him at the end of the text, that he's more concerned with his loss of honour and his loss of titles than he is concerned with the loss of his life. We see here a few quotes about honour, um, and we can see what I've just spoken about there in the second quote. You know, a better brook, the loss of brittle life than those proud titles thou hast one of me, he says to hell as he's dying. Um, so certainly, you know, honour is, is Hotspur's chief pursuit. Um, it's brought, brought him a great deal of recognition from people, but it also has led him into this battle. Um, he's fighting for honour in many ways, and, and in the end, it sort of becomes his downfall. Well, how does it fit in with the themes of the text? Obviously, we've just spoken a little about honour. He's obsessed with it. He thinks honour is the greatest and most important thing in the world. And he thinks honour comes from beating people in fights and being brave in battle. This is Hotspur's idea of honour. It's important for us to to understand what Hotspur thinks of honour, how he looks at gaining honour, and compare that to some of the other characters, particularly Hal and Falstaff's idea of honours, to get a, a, a clear picture about what is Shakespeare trying to tell us about honour. Here is one idea of honour presented in the character of Hotspur, uh, and he sees it as very much being about being victorious in, in battle, uh, and that and honour being the chief thing in life. Hal and Falstaff present different ideas of honour. The second theme we can think of him fitting in with is order and disorder. Um, he's one of the rebels. So certainly if he's a rebel and he's rebelling against the king, there's a sense of disorder happening there. And right from the beginning, there's a sense of his rebelliousness, even when he refuses to give his prisoners over to the king. And when the king starts to talk about about Mortimer and, and, and tells Hotspur not to speak of Mortimer and not to mention his name, this sends um, Hotspur off on, on one of his, his tantrums. And he talks about, you know, well, I'm going to you know shout, come in to him in his sleep and shout Mortimer in his ear and I'm going to train a bird to speak Mortimer over and over again. So he's certainly got the, that rebellious nature. You see that right? from the start he loves the plot to topple king henry and bring mortimer into power um and you know he's happy to lead that charge when his father northumberland doesn't show up so he's certainly as one of the rebels and one of the chief rebels playing a part in the disorder that is found in england at this time rulership and, and leadership at the beginning of the play we see uh, king henry lamenting that hotspur isn't his son that Hal is his son rather than Hotspur, because the king sees Hotspur as a much better candidate for the throne. And so there's certainly some ideas that Hotspur carries a lot of the qualities that are considered worthy of being a king or worthy of rulership or leadership. And certainly he, he does a good job of, of leading his troops and organising uh, this rebellion. So there's aspects there of Hotspur being a leader. The king, when he's speaking to his own son, Hal, uh, mentions that Hotspur is probably better suited to becoming the king than his own son Hal is. So when we look at his character and we look at the way people are perceiving him, there are ideas that Hotspur has the qualities of a leader or the qualities of someone who would make a good king. So there's some important questions we really need to ask ourselves about Hotspur. And, and they're these, if you want to get a good understanding of, of how he fits in with the text. Would he make a better king than Hal? And of course, why or why not? So have a look at the qualities of Hal and Hotspur and, and think about what qualities does Hotspur have that would make him a good king? And would he be a better king than Hal? Why or why not? How does his idea of honour compare with the other characters, particularly Falstaff and Hal? And have a look at his honour compared to Falstaff's honour. And then, of course, the, the idea that um, he doesn't change throughout the text. But ask yourself, do our feelings towards him change throughout the text? Do we have a different opinion of Hotspur by the end of the text than we do at the beginning of the text? And if so, why has that happened? What has caused us to feel differently about him? And the final question, of course, is that he's a rebel, but is his rebellion justified? He does rebel against the king. Is it justified? And what is Shakespeare asking us to, to think about his rebellion? Um, so there's some, some tricky questions, but certainly to nut out those and to get an understanding or an interpretation of those questions will help you to go a long way in understanding Hotspur in this text.